And now we'd like to uh, introduce to you the other candidates from the 27th, 28th, and 29th district. And there are some absences tonight, and I'll mention those as well. So when I say your name, and please forgive me if I say it wrong, raise your hand and smile. For state representative of the 27th district position, one Stan Barker, Republican from Tacoma. There we go. And Representative Dennis Flanagan, Democrat from Tacoma. Uh, note that neither candidate for state representative 27th district position 2, <coughs> Jeannie Darniel or, Brent, or Brett Edensward were able to attend tonight. Now for state representative 28th district position, exclamation point. Because that's one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, 28th district. Uh, Troy Kelly, Democrat from Lakewood. Okay. And his opponent, Don Anderson, is unable to be here tonight. For State Representative 28th District Position 2, Representative Tammy Green, Democrat from Gig Harbor. No. 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 I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? I'm what? Incorporated Pierce County. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry. So sorry. Uh, and her opponent, Bob Lawrence, may be joining us later. Not here, right, Bob? Not uh, State Senator 29th District, Senator Rosa Franklin, Tacoma. State Representative 29th District Position 1, Representative Steve Conway, Tacoma, and State Representative 29th District Position 2, Senator Steve Kirby. Uh, representative. Okay, so Senator. Representative Steve Kirby. In his own mind. Don't demote me. From Tacoma. <laughs> All right. Uh, I take all responsibility for any mislabeling. <laughs> question four, and again, as, just like before, you each get to answer this question. I'll try to mix it up a little bit, although some of you are unopposed, at least in, on this table. <laughs> all right. Question four is about education funding. Washington State has funded education below the national average for over a decade, while it has increased academic standards and has instituted one of the most stringent exit exams. The basic education allocation formula has not changed substantially since 1977 and does not completely fund the learning assistance program, LAP, school transportation, special education, and English language learners, nor does it cover technology proficiency. What are your views on updating the definition of basic education and supporting a funding package for basic education that reflects current education practices and requirements? Just go in the order I just had there. Stan Barker first. It's uneven. They're all Democrats. <laughs> and there's me. It's a good sign, Stan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need some change, Dennis. Anyway, folks, um, I, uh, I love education. I got some of it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, when I was chairman of the Pro School Fund Mark Drives and uh, on the Distributive Education Advisory Board for 15 years in the School District. And uh, I certainly understand the value of education. And uh, we had a great conversation the other evening uh, at the Milton PTA um, <coughs> talking about the Wassel. And uh, the parents in the audience didn't like it. Surprising. And uh, the teachers at that particular school, the students had all reached the goals that they had for their students, and they were all going to go and have a celebration the next weekend. And uh, so, you know, there's some good things and there's some bad things about the education system that we have today. The thing about it is, is, you know, I worked in the president's office at Boeing for 11 years, and uh, I found out that the average 17 year old couldn't fill out a job application. And so, you know, we have some weaknesses and we need some strengths. We need to strengthen our educational system and we need to do, we need to finance our educational system and the previous group talked about the inheritance tax. Uh, there it goes, goes by fast, don't it? But the inheritance tax, I would uh, definitely repeat a lot. You know, I'd like to leave my kids what I, what I got left and tell them to get all they can get now because when I go there probably won't be that much, but you know, I'd like to protect uh, a private enterprise. Uh, our system of education should include teaching of our Constitution, uh, the state Constitution, the Bill of Rights, those kinds of things uh, are fundamental to this country, the free enterprise system. I talk, I mean, I'm the only guy that got the horn, all right. All right, Representative Barker, you're up next. 
Representative Dennis Flanagan. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, real question is, do you want to tax yourself? Do you want to legislate that education gets paid for? So first, uh, I think that part of the blame of our educational, our failure to do the primary responsibility is people want to pay taxes. And I, everybody worries that Democrats want to tax and spend. I think that if you won't put the money up, you can't bitch about the school system. Now, I think a lot of people are willing to put the money up and they get stuck with the results of, of, a, of an election process that refuses to deal with Washington State's terrible tax structure. Second, I think the legislature has to be held responsible. And the earlier question uh, was, in a sense, would you support smaller classes? One of the crises for legislators is there are so many educational problems. Teacher salaries, assistance, lack of nurses, lack of counselors, all kinds of things going on in the school system. That to select which one you're going to fix, when you have failed to fix so many of them, or failed to fund them, might be more real. So, I'm an aggressive supporter of a funding support system that lets education bring this state to become the smartest state in the United States. I don't like being 49th. It seems like just a poor spot to kind of work up from, but there's a long way to go. We just fail to do the job, and it isn't just the legislature. This is, if you notice, a place that has decided that it's okay to drop out of school Lots of families say you don't really have to succeed. We all, whether it be personal responsibility or government responsibility, everybody better step up to the plate on this one. Thank you. Troy Kelly. I'm a father of two. I'm a PTA member myself. I have a small business here in the city, but I also teach as a reserve officer for the Army Jack School. So education is a very important issue for me. My wife teaches every day here in Tacoma. Uh, both uh, our families are families of teachers. My grandmother was a teacher, and my wife's pretty much her entire family was a teacher. So again, it's a very critical issue for us. You'll hear a lot of different proposals up here, but I think the, uh, the number one issue is who's going to make it happen. And we look at the funding as the, the number one issue here. So I think we do need to fund education. You know where I'm coming from and what I'll do. Uh, Representative Tammy Green. Um, the question referred to the basic education uh, reevaluation, and I think it's probably time that we relook at that question. But my comments sort of reflect what Dennis said in some ways, because whether you change the education or not, I mean, change the definition of basic education or not, it doesn't change the fact that we're in the 40s in regards to per pupil spending and overall spending in our K-12 system in general and I, I think you know it's kind of like you get what you pay for and uh, we have to figure out how we're going to do better um, I'm a believer that one of the best investments we can make as a state and as a people and as a society are investing in education one of the problems is we have a lot of things to pay for as representative Flanagan talked about um, the health care question particularly I don't know if people are aware, but we spend nearly 50% of our budget on health care in this state. And yet, so many people are uninsured or have uh, health insurance that doesn't uh, meet their needs. So, you know, it really is kind of you get what you pay for. I'm all for looking at how do we have more efficiencies in government, how do we do health care better so we can free up some of those dollars. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, there has to be more funds going there for us to expect different results. Uh, Senator Rosa Franklin. Oh, thank you. The, um, in regards to education, the state's paramount duty, and we hear it over and over again, the paramount duty of the state is to educate our children. While we have increased funding for education, it has not kept up with inflation. And also, the demand that has been put on the system itself. It is not reading, writing, and arithmetic, as many would like to say, anymore. What's in the classroom now? There are children with health problems, which we have not seen, did not have when I went to school. Um, we are in a different age. This is the 21st century. 
one of technology, so the, the demand <coughs> is different. Uh, the classroom is different. I'm in the classroom a lot now because I do have a grandson. In it. And when I see the environment <coughs> where kids are squeezed together without space and the teacher trying <coughs> to teach 35 rambunctious teenagers and the environment, the 35, <coughs> one teacher with no assistant, um, my eyes were open, but they were open before, but wider. I say, yes, reduce class size, and I say, yes, we need to fund it because it's a whole different time now. <laughs> and I say, yes, we need to look at what basic education defined is. I used to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And, uh, by way of introduction, uh, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've lived in the Fern Hill area for a long time. I actually was a PTA president from Hill School and also have raised my children uh, in the Tacoma School District. And, you know, I think when I look at this issue, uh, the key issue for me is that our, our state is failing our education system in funding. And that is why this last session we established a bipartisan commission uh, by the governor called Washington Learns to look at the whole financing of K-12 education in this state. Uh, we cannot tolerate these low rankings in education spending and compete in a global economy. That is a foundation, education is a foundation of our ability to compete. We do have problems in our tax system. We cannot, we have a tax system that depends fundamentally on the health of our economy. The you know, taxes and sales taxes fluctuate wildly. And as a result, last two years ago, we had a budget deficit. Today, we have a budget surplus. That is how fast it changes in our state. That's why it has made education funding so challenging for us, is because of our tax system. I believe fundamentally, however, to address these issues, we must set some benchmarks and get these ratings up for this state. And I'm hoping and looking forward that this next session of the legislature will be an education funding legislative session. Thank you. And, uh, President Steve Kirby. <laughs> 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 what, what was the question? <laughs> Actually, I, I, the, the fact of the matter is, I have forgotten the question, but I remember a couple of things uh, in it. Um, and I remember the questionnaire that you sent me that I didn't fill out. Um, I'm unopposed, and I don't do a lot of questionnaires. And, and uh, that's just <laughs> how it is. I have a kid who's a fifth year senior over at Central, and you just can't tell him anything. He wants to be a teacher. And what I can't figure out is who determined uh, the value of what it is that people do in, in this state? I wonder who did that? Who determined that uh, uh, a guy who sells uh, furniture in the, during the interim uh, uh, at, a, at a furniture store makes more money than a teacher that's been there for 20 years. Who, who decided that teachers should be paid uh, the way they're paid? I can't figure that out. Um, but uh, I asked my wife, my lovely wife who's here in the audience, and she told me, well, you guys decide. And uh, so I think that's something that we really have to take a look at in this state is, how we, how do we attract good uh, people, the best people to that profession? You have the true believers right now because they're working. <laughs> so, you know, there, uh, that I think is a is a huge deal. Funding for education is uh, in the toilet. We need to uh, we need to improve. Um, I don't know that if we all sat around the room and discussed the definition of. Uh, I'm sure there is some definition of basic education. I don't know. Is. Um, but um, and I haven't read the recommendations from the uh, uh, 
Washington learns yet. I have until January to do that, by the way, unlike these other candidates. So uh, check in with me later and I'll continue after the next question and I will. <laughs> I never could. I never afforded one of those when I was a little kid. And so I always, uh, <laughs> so I and now the math question: uh, Washington has a big problem. Just under fifty percent of our current high school juniors failed the math wassail last spring. It was actually the tenth graders. These students must pass the reading, writing, and math portions of the wassail in order to graduate in two thousand eight. So the junior. Like, do you agree with the statement made by representatives Ross Hunter and Glenn Anderson that, quote, math is essential to fix this session? What do you think needs to be fixed? Do you support delaying the graduation requirement of passing the math component of the WASL? And uh, we'll just go in the other direction. Uh, Steve Kirby. I hate the WASL. I have ever since it was passed by the legislature. I have a kid. Uh, my youngest uh, is uh, just starting high school now, so he's had, he's taken the fourth grade wassail and the seventh grade wassail, and he'll take the tenth grade wassail. Um, I can tell you there was no fourth grade when my kid was in the fourth grade. It was all practicing taking the wassail. That's all those kids did. In the seventh grade, it wasn't much better. He's not in the tenth grade yet, but I can tell you that it's wassail, wassail, wassail is all you hear. And I'm frankly uh, tired of it and wish we'd spend more time teaching kids and helping kids learn rather than having them practice take a test. And so that's, you know, I'm just, I, I wanted to come here and say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might as well just, by the way, take that, just hold it in your hand. <laughs> um, I don't know, you think that's enough? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have you to You yield the rest of your time. <laughs> time. <laughs> I'm gonna somebody who has enough time. <laughs> All right, Steve Conway. And I welcome you all to our town meetings, all right? <laughs> uh, anyway, I actually think this whole math issue, you know, we looked at our test scores on the math and they were also very, very low. And, uh, you know, I, I don't believe in, in testing as the only function of education, though I concur with what Steve is saying, but I also do, do know that we need to monitor our children and make sure that they're learning what they need to learn to compete. As I said before, in this, this society is becoming increasingly competitive. You know, something, uh, our, our superintendent of, of instruction in the Tacoma School District has come to me and talked with me how he fundamentally disagrees with the way we go about with math education in this, in this uh, state. And I have seen that there is a motion underway in Olympia to follow what he is suggesting and reevaluating how we're teaching math in our schools. And I think that's healthy. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing the results of that. I think we also need to recognize on math education, one thing that I disagree with Ross Hunter on is the fact that yes, we need to strengthen math education in our schools, but on the other hand, we've got to make sure we have a supply of math teachers to teach math. And we have got to do something about that issue. And, uh, and I think, you know, right now, for example, Tacoma School Districts, they can't find math teachers. And we all know that. And so we have got to figure out a way to get our supply of math teachers strengthened as well in solving this issue. This means teacher salary issues. We gotta be able to recruit teachers as well from other states and to meet our, our need in this arena and make sure our schools are, are meeting that need as well. So, thank you. Rosa Franklin. Thank you. Um, well, I do not believe that a child should have to fail four times before he or she has. Uh, the alternatives. Um, the the wasso itself is a uh, an exit. It's an exit exam, and I don't think that one test does not determine what a child has learned. I believe in educating the whole child, and in this, um, my personal opinion is when we just concentrate on the wasso, which is is wagon is the tail wagging the dog it's in turn taking away some other terms types of learning experience for our children yes math in the age of technology is very very important and i think the way uh, probably it's so why they're failing i i do not know it would be good to know why the kids are failing math is it the way it's being taught is it the substance that the uh, 
I heard someone they have the algebra test, uh, an algebra project has been created. We now, in this school, we have Saxons that's going along with the peasant. So I don't know, I'm very good with multiplication. Um, the thing about it is math in the age of technology is important, but we need more than that. We have to think about educating the whole child. And when you do that, I think a then the child has a broad aspect, and I think to be able to, to pass any test, but a child should not have to fail four times before they have the alternative.